that, why don't you all give a quick introduction, um, who you are and why you're here. Um, so, hey, hi everybody, Matteo Collina, uh, part of the Node.js Tech and Steering Committee, board member at the OpenJS Foundation, uh, co-founder of this company called, uh, what is it, uh, well, anyway, Platformatic, okay, new, new uh, sweater, so thank you, Luca, for the, for the new sweater, and uh, um, also author of a framework called uh, Fastify and a bunch of other stuff. So if you're running JavaScript on your, if you're doing any software development, probably your software, my software is on your computer. So I'm, you know, that level of penetration. So, you know, <laughs> donations are fine and useful. Thank you. Coffee works too. Coffee works too. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Christian. Um, I'm working as a founding engineer at Stateful um, and involved in the OpenJS Foundation as a contributor to the Rep.io project, um, which I've been maintaining for I think over eight years now and um, seeing the project grow over time and uh, you know trying to build a community around it uh, has been interesting and challenging at the same time. There we go. Okay, so I think maybe a lot of us know what community is. I'm just wondering, all of you sitting here, do you all think you belong to part of a technical community, any kind of a community? Yes, anybody not? Feel like they're part of a community. Who's not involved yet? <laughs> yeah. So, so we can kind of skip over that because I feel like we sort of all kind of have that grounding on what a community is. So, when you all, for your projects, think about a community, what are the goals for you on building a community? Um, okay, I'm taking it. So, the uh, there are two kinds of uh, essentially uh, open source projects. Probably more, but two major two major families of open source projects. One are uh, essentially company funded open source. So it's a way of distribution, essentially. And the company retains all the governance of, of the project. The other ones are the one that adopt an open governance uh, setting where you uh, essentially the ownership of the project and the way the project is run is shared across multiple individuals, typically volunteers, typically spread across the globe. This is the typical, more of the typical vision of uh, what we uh, collectively think as open source, but it's, you can totally be uh, an open source project and not have an open governance or possibly also vice versa. So uh, I just wanted to clarify that because a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about, especially on the concept of a community, are on the, on the idea of uh, an open governance project, okay, which most of the uh, projects at the OpenJS Foundation are. So the, um, the catch is, uh, what's the goal of having a community? Well, the problem is if you are a maintainer that creates this open source project and you release it to the world, it's um, the state, uh, the, the fundamental problem is you want, the goal for, your, for, your, for you should be to remove yourself from the project and the project to keep be running. And this is ultimately the, like if the project can outlive your, your interest in it, then you have somewhat succeeded. Also because there's a lot of influx of bugs, requests and things. And if you don't, if you are alone, you will burn out. And it's full of stories of burnout in open source. And then when somebody, that happens, the project stagnate. And the more the project stagnate, the more you burn out. And at some point the project dies. Or, or if not die, if it does, if it doesn't die, it creates problems down the line for all its users that you nurtured and you care about, and then you feel horrible about it. I speak for I speak for experience. So essentially, you are you have this state of um, uh, more or less tension uh, if you are alone. So if you're not alone and it's not part of a company that's funding the, the operations, what do you do? Well, you need to involve others to collaborate and work on, on your project. Uh, well, and um, ultimately, the goal is to spread the load of maintenance. So uh, with great powers come great responsibility in that sense. And if you're spreading the load of maintenance, you are also spreading the fact that you are, need to also spread the governance of the project and give, you know, something away to some extent. And uh, which is good, though, because it's... Uh, you know, you want, uh, usually if more people, more diverse people are involved in the decision-making process of a project, the actual outcome is, is, is going to be better, okay, in, in, that, in that sense. So, um, yeah, that's, um, 
So ultimately, the goal is for the community, to some extent, to take over in, in running your project, at least in, in open source. So. I want to add something to that. I totally agree with uh, Matteo's uh, view on that. Um, another value um, that a community can bring for companies adopting open source projects is um, security, right? Um, you know, with company or corporate driven projects, you know, if the corporation A doesn't pay maintainer B anymore, the project is likely to die. And a lot of companies out there, they seek and look out for open source projects that are community driven, where they have some sort of security that, you know, when maintainer A disappears, uh, there's a maintainer B that takes over. And that is a big value add that, you know, with community driven projects um, that comes with it. And we have other communities too in JavaScript. We have the OpenJS Foundation communities, right? So, Mateo, you're on the board, and uh, Christian, you're on the Cross Project Council. You're Cross Project Cross Project Council. Talk about the importance of building a community across projects, and why is that important? I think generally we all, you know, work in the same field. We all work with JavaScript, and um, it's just great to have people. Uh, you know, to listen at the Collab Summit to people, to the Node community, and 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 see what they're going to up, be up to, so I can know as a as a user of Node.js with my framework that okay, these changes are coming up. In order to prepare my project for success in long term, those are the changes that I need to prepare to put into the project. So the challenge in so uh, why um, the CPC exist or why the OpenJS Foundation, to some extent, exists, is um, there are a set of uh, challenges that uh, running uh, open governance, uh, open source projects, uh, poses to the maintainers. And most of the, a lot of those things are not really, um, uh, are not really in the skill set of the, of, 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 of the maintainer themselves. So because of that, um, a group like the uh, Cross Project Council and the, the foundation and the board and all the things attached to it exist. And uh, uh, it provides great services on, uh, on the projects. It's, um, to some extent, the way I see it is, is work that needs to be done, to some extent. It's, uh, and it's great that there is, or um, I don't know, that there was, a, I think it was uh, Sarah Chips that, that, that mentioned it's uh, the bureaucracy of open source projects or something. Bureaucracy of open source. Uh, yeah, the bureaucracy of open source, and uh, you know, and it's great that people are uh, um, they really want to get that bit done because it's actually it's actually hard. Okay, like, and from uh, uh, help in uh, uh, you know um, conflict escalation and moderation and all sorts of things. Those things are very hard and a lot of time it's a different skill set compared to what we usually do so yeah there's all kinds of communities I mean I built my career on community engagement and marketing uh, there's a big legal community in open source now I have my executive direct, direct director community at the Linux Foundation um, so you do learn a lot from each other um, and just yeah and it, yeah you just learn and can apply in a number of scenarios so let's talk specifically about WebDriver um, and maybe Fastify on how the community has, uh, what sort of, what are some concrete things that you have done to build community and what are the, the direct benefits that you've received from the community? So one of the things, you know, there are different types of contributors, right? It, the people that pass by and post issues, the people that maybe do some regular uh, commits and contributions and then the core people. And in order to kind of like increase contribution from all three sectors, you gotta, I, I kind of like build a funnel, how I can get more people in these, in these uh, um, buckets. And, and one of the things to get people interested in contributing is like in, at my, that works at my size for WebDriver.io um, is like provide open office hours and invite people, hey, if you want to work on, a pro, on an issue particularly, I'm going to help you, uh, you know, conquer the code base and, and, and you know, win with your first uh, pull request and contribution. Um, I, I set up a chat system or like a, I created a Discord server for people to join where, you know, I can see what the pain points are for the people that I cater to and, uh, you know, see what they want to see from the project um, to understand what needs to be built. Um, and there were various of other things that, uh, you know, can help to 
to build communities around the project? So for me, this was uh, actually uh, like part of Fastify and the decision that we I have made in creating when I started to think about starting this project were very deliberate in how, what were the values of that specific community. So where came from, to, to be honest, a specific planning phase for a specific uh, looking at the status of the other projects and uh, what uh, what was what were the problem there and why major projects in the Node.js ecosystem had essentially close to no maintainers on on them very small teams and how could you instead to build a, a, a community where um, you know it, everybody was chipping in and uh, collaborating to maintain uh, maintain the framework so what we have done was so the first thing was well, I'm just going to start building the, this new technology if I can convince another human being to, to build it with me. So this is the... That started with one person. I started with one person. Like I need, in order to do this, I need to convince another person to build it with me. Okay, this is the... And from there, I, 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 which is the antithesis of a lot of how other open source projects are born. Okay, I have an idea. I, I, I sit down and code it and build it. No, this was... If I want to build this, this is going to be way too complex, require, require way too many people. I don't know many of you, so Fastify is an HTTP framework for, for Node. In order to implement this kind of stuff, you need to know the HTTP specs in and out. And it's actually a lot of, um, plus a lot of JavaScript, there's a lot of uh, API design, a interesting problems to solve over there. So anyway, uh, what I've done is, uh, and then you know, cre create uh, another point come from an, uh, previous experiences where, you know, I, I, try, I was always tried if somebody opened an issue to answer that issue for them and solve that problem and put a fix. And instead here, I just decided, nope, I'm not doing any of that. I'm just saying, look, if you want, this is the commons, okay? So it's your house as much as mine. So if you complaining that there is uh, a scratch, you need to take your, you know, is the paint, go, go paint the scratch. Okay, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do it for you. It's your house as much as mine. And if you have this problem, you know, it's the toilet is broken. You, you know, it's uh, uh, it's everybody's responsibility to fix it, right? So and that. What's the reaction been? Uh, the reaction has been fantastic. Okay, and enthusiastic, or not, in the sense. Or not. But uh, that's that's the interesting part. I was not caring at all, of at least at the early stage, in attracting the people that didn't want to be part of the active community of maintainers. So f this is the most important part. You want to cater for that specific block of people that are going to sustain the project long term, especially at, at the early stages. So, and, in, and keep growing that group of people all yeah, the time. It's, it's expectation setting, right? If you, if you, at some point, if you just, you know, fix a bug for you, uh, yourself every, again and again, um, then you, you you create an you create a like uh, a surrounding where it's like okay it's that's just a service I can go there fix a uh, file a bug and people will fix it but if you create a clear expectation of like uh, here's the bug you you file the bug that's good um, here are the ways how you can fix it um, people are incentivized to to give back and I tried that in my project where it was like instead of going about myself and fix it back within I don't know an hour or two um, I gave people exact directions, here's the file that you need to look into, and people were feel empowered, and they're like, okay, cool, I can take this on, and um, you know, this saves me time, and f makes people feel empowered, and do their own ch changes. So it's not just lofty words, and you know, on setting culture, like just some real specific things that people can walk away with on, on building community. Yeah, and no, I, I would love to see in, in open source in general, more incentives where maintainers go out and provide people clear direction is like where you can contribute, where can you provide value? Because there's so much, uh, we talk about, you know, open source projects always about code contribution, but there's not. There's like so many value streams that open source project can, uh, you know, receive or want to receive. But often there's a, just a missing com uh, documentation of this, like what, what, what do we want, what do we need, and communicate this clear to the audience and to the community so they can feel empowered and to contribute back. Let's talk about the stages of contribution. I mean, I think one of the misconceptions I hear when I speak to maybe, if you, if you don't speak at an open source conference, you speak at a 
just a regular tech conference, people think you need to show up to a project with 10,000 lines of code and solving a huge problem that ne no one else has figured out. So talk to me about the stages of contributions. I think we have a wonderful example of Claudio, right? He joined the Node.js community, um, making great conversation to, to, to the documentation system and then, you know, you know, becoming more experienced of where the community needs help. Um, and I think that's where everyone can just go about if they um, have an open source project that they like, just join the community, look in, and, you know, just by even like helping other people to succeed with that tool is already value enough to, you know, start start with that and then, you know, you work your way up. Um, I think that's a, that's a great way to do that. Yeah, but I tend to see four stages in the, uh, in, of, of somebody, of people, you know, using open source, okay? Uh, the, the largest group is the, what I call them, the lurkers, which do not, uh, the passive consumers, okay, or putting it in another way. You are passively consuming open source. We are all passively consuming open source in one form or another. I am, I am a passive consumer of the Linux kernel. I'm not contributing, I'm not opening issues, I'm not, I did in the past, but that's a long, long time ago. Okay, I decided not to, it's too much work. Um, but it's, uh, uh, it's a great project to contribute to if you, if you like that kind of stuff. But the gist is, um, these are the, the, the passive, um, you know, the passive consumers. Then you have uh, more uh, active people that can, you know, open issues, provide reproduction. Um, maybe every now and then on, on the issue tracker, you can see their name. And uh, um, some of these is, these is various substages. There is the first one that just pop an issue and then disappear and people that come in regularly and you want to be them, to, you make, want to make them regulars, okay? And you want to nurture them. Then you have people that start to produce code and contributions and non-code contributions too are valuable. Anyway, help the project. And uh, ultimately then stuff is people, oh, this guy or this gal, uh, they've done a fantastic good job of, of at maintaining the, at providing, code that I want to bring them as part of the maintenance team. And then this is, to be honest, it's a, it's a funnel, okay? You need to think of it as, a, as, a, as a, to be honest, it's, it's a funnel. And you need to, um, to think it that way and see that you want to uh, help people. Uh, you, 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 need the end, you need people at the end of the funnel to make your project sustainable. And this needs to have value for all the actors involved. Uh, for successful for a successful open source project, so and they're great tools that help you to create those funnels. For I use uh, a tool called Orbit, and they provide free services for open source softwares. And I see when someone is not engaging within two weeks, and I go back to them and nurture them. It's like, hey, I check in with them. It's like, hey, what's up? Uh, everything okay? And sh should we work on something together? Um, so there are tools that help you to create this, to build these funnels and and categorize your 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 members of your community. And uh, what other, uh, how else are you using data to measure your community engagement? Think about from your small projects to maybe some of the larger projects at Node. I mean, are you regularly, is there a gut check on that? Do you notice patterns? Okay. I have to admit that I open NPM stats almost every day for the last six years. <laughs> Seeing the stats going up is like, for me personally as a maintainer, exciting to see. Um, but um, yeah, to come back to that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have been playing with a, launch, uh, a lot of dashboard tools for open source um, in the past. And so far, for whatever I've been settling with Orbit, they provide you great, they give you all the lists of members, they give you information about how active members are. Um, and it's have been really helpful tool to categorize your community members and the organization behind that and see how they engage with your project, not only on the GitHub, but also on Twitter, Discord, or YouTube. Um, that has been a great tool for me. Apart from download metrics, which are very, uh, very helpful, uh, it's something that is even uh, more, to some extent, it's on when growing a community, you typically need to, you have a, you have a few bits that are fantastic. So when you, um, for example, you need to use a chat system, okay? And with chat system, you can always, uh, 
if you not having a chat is a massive problem for uh, uh, for open source projects. So you want you really want to have some level of uh, of a chat so that you can very quickly talk to somebody without thinking, oh, how can I find how do I find their email address? Okay, and and, and so this is this is like very uh, uh, simple thing. So you have your 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 GitHub, you give your chat, and with your chat system, then you can ping them. But also you can see how many people are online. And when you have start having a nice of a little bit of a community inside the, 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 the chat, you are at a point where uh, people start helping each other. So if you look into the Fastify Discord, it's uh, basically essentially self-serve. Like we, we need the, the, most of the, like only a, a few members of the team are there, but most people just help each other. So, and that is super helpful most of the time for, for them. So you reach that stage where uh, essentially, you have um, the community is is helping each other, so it's not relying on you for help, which is the um, to some extent end goal of of it. So it's it's great to see. Great. So we've talked. You talked a little bit about different types of open source projects. There are company led projects. There's community led projects like Node. There's still community across both, but. How would you, I mean, what are the differences from community building and participation? Yeah, I, I would add two more types, which is like the the solo projects, right? The hobby projects that people have on GitHub and the, the so-called monarchist open source for projects, like Python would be a good example. All these different kind of types have different incentives and um, different interests of how to build a community. For community-driven projects especially is like they live based on the community, all their value streams come from people that just have fun contributing to the project and um, um, yeah that for that is particularly important for those projects are pretty important to build out this community that provide value to a project when it comes to then corporate projects you know the values they they are not that much interested in building the community because they have the company a that is funding um, and you know that works and um, for uh, I think the foundation-based projects, GraphQL as an example, um, they have an impact enough that there's enough interest that companies fund the project with people and money. Um, so when it comes down to community building, those community-led projects are most, um, you know, affected by that. Yeah, it's um, the uh, growing. Uh, uh, I, you know, at, the, at this point, I'm, I'm part of. I'm I'm doing a startup, so in open source, our main product is open source, and we are essentially doing it again, essentially building a, a little community around uh, around this. And you can see the difference, that there, is a fun, there are fundamental difference and fundamental different expectation of uh, what a, a, a community uh, for, from a corp that, for a project that's essentially run by a company uh, versus uh, a community that is born out of, um, uh, that is an open governance community. Okay, there are two fundamental, um, th there are two fundamental difference. And uh, in one, it's uh, you know, you are uh, in one, you need to help the people using your 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 stuff. Okay, because you are creating the community, you are growing the community to. Uh, uh, for for them to make it easy for them to use your product and, and, and so on. On the other end, you are doing it to survive. So it's um, it's, it's kind of different, and uh, um, it's hard both both ways because you don't want to to if you are building a corporate uh, a, a community around a, a, a product. Okay, you are. You are building it uh, for, and but you don't want to transform them into uh, mindless fanboys, okay? If if I, I you know somebody's laughing because I, this is probably a reference um, to to a few things that are out there, but it's uh, um, you know there is uh, uh, I I'm pretty much skeptical on when somebody just super uh, uh, becomes a zealot of, of certain certain way of, be, of seeing the world so um, and I st you still want to be in a place where you value critics you value you get there they can still be part of the uh, um, decision-making project process of 
um, of the product, but it's uh, it's a di slightly different dynamic, as I said. Interesting. Okay, so if uh, someone out here is, you know, they're they're here at the conference and they want to become part of a different community, this community seems great. What should they do? Um, um, they would go out and see projects that they find interesting, and I think it's all, you know, having engagement comes out of personal interest um, mostly, and um, every community often is welcome enough to just, you know. Um, have people looking around and then provide them ways to contribute um, to their com community and um, like I can just reemphasize what I mentioned before is like I try to everyone who joins the discord channel I'm like I want to check in with them and be like hey where do you want to contribute um, where do you want to what are your projects and your fields that you're interested in and I hope that every project has something like that um, and if not there's you know as someone who joins the community it's definitely not wrong to create an issue and be like hey I have these skills how can I help you you know with the in the project they can do that yeah awesome I love that idea it's amazing works very well yeah for for fastify is mostly on the on the issues so you know it's at this point it's 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 very um, it's becoming more a little bit of a meme to some extent. It's Matteo asking some asking people, hey, you know, it's a good, it, this is, thanks for reporting. Can you please send a pull request? And remember to add unit tests. And this is the, it can be a meme at this point, you know, it's been uh, been asking these to people all, all the time, all over the places. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, well, you know, the answer there is either you're a member of this community or you're not. And uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's what it is. So a few people have said, no, I'm not using your stuff anymore. And uh, this is the answer that I got a few times. And I said, oh, good. That's my, it's, the answer is, yeah, great. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's uh, one last thing to, to support at least uh, that, uh, you know, you don't want to engage here. So you're, you're, you're basically self-selecting at this point. Um, one concrete example that I've recently um, experienced is um, uh, Augustine, um, he chipped in the Collab Summit, he created an issue and said like, I would like to see the Web Docs uh, translated in French. I'm like, okay, let me revive my um, engagement in, like with Crowden and connected Docker Zaros with Crowden and I hired people on Fiverr to kickstart the translation and translated like, the documentation into Spain and Hindi. Uh, cost me 800 bucks. Um, I translated German myself, and then I released the, web the website in three different translations. Um, and that has kickstarted so many other people. Be like, wait, we can help translating the website. It's like, that's awesome. And then people now, we have this issue for translating the documentation. People go there and be like, hey, I can translate the website in, I don't know, Tamil or other languages, and um, I'm opening the language for them, and they they just go ahead and translate it. That's like, I find this awesome. And, and one of the examples where it's like, someone comes in and be like, hey, I can provide translations and you know, you help them be successful contributing to the community. Do we have any questions from the floor? Claudio? Here. Yeah, um, the, the first question that I have is, um, it's related to the health, mental health of maintainers across, for example, uh, well, uh, internet can be very non-forgiving, right, at, at times. Uh, how you deal, um, or how you to at least have dealt with uh, the unfortunate moments where the community at large isn't really nice with the maintainers. How do you keep the cycle of them feeling motivated to keep contributing to open source even when the community is at their necks, you know. I, I did, have you got, uh, I have a long answer here, so if you want, I am, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I can just answer from my point uh, short. When, when I get fed up or when I feel burnt out and I see there's so many things coming at me, uh, I, I, I see that at myself by not being very kind in my answers. Now I'm good, we're going to become short. And I see that and then I step out for a day or two, be like, that's that's enough. And then I come back and see things with different eyes. Um, and especially when, you know, other people's posting issues or, answer, uh, or they're answering to your issues, um, don't answer with a nice set of respect. Um, 
I just step out and come back, and then the world sometimes looks different, and then move on. Um, I had some pretty bad uh, burnout, semi-burnout experiences, where I stopped maintaining projects. As you know, there is a few of mine. I have a few uh, gravier projects, or putting project in the gravier of, of the, that I left out there. And look, a few of them are still, I don't know, a million downloads per week or half a million downloads per week. Or something that makes, you know, why the heck you abandon this or whatever, comes from a multiple uh, set of, um, uh, the, the toll comes down to um, the, what I call there is an imbalance between the number of uh, uh, the, the community expectations and the number of maintainers to support those community expectations, okay? So it comes from this imbalance and you need a certain uh, you need a ratio, but this is different from, from each project, but you need to, to have a, a level of representation of these amount of maintainers are needed to, for this large, at large community to exist. And th if things are not meeting those expectations, if things are not matching, you got this situation of burnout or frustration, and it can be good at times. So you can, you can have a peak of, of things, a uh, peak of influx of new members on, of the community of users of your of your open source project, which makes it uh, enlarge the community, so it makes more bugs, more things, then it goes down because for some reason you cannot service them and they just, no, I'm fed up, I'm going back using Python, okay? I'm not doing using Node anymore, okay? And uh, Node does a lot of surveys and yeah. collab summits to prioritize. Right? Yeah, pretty much. So again, it's, so um, uh, to be, uh, this is a good example. Thank you, Robin. So uh, essentially it was a few years back, there was this perception in the community that Node was stagnating and what Node was not following what they were the need of, uh, of the community, okay? And uh, I remember being in, in a collab summit between 2017, 2018, something like that, where I, I laid out, uh, uh, I, I don't know if you were in the room, Ethan, at the time or at this point, but I laid out a plan or an aspirational plan to ship fetch in Node.js. Like the thing that everybody was requesting in Node.js was, let's uh, we need fetch in Node. And, uh, you know, I was, um, discussing it and it was, I laid out this, uh, it's still online by the way, the presentation, and I laid this plan to, uh, sh to, sh to ship fetch in, in, in Node. And it only took, I, I don't know, maybe four years to get there. <laughs> uh, uh, it's, you know, I said, with a lot of meme, we made fetch happen, okay? It's, uh, you know, but it's, uh, um, because those things take time to move, okay, from time to time. It's not just as simple as a lot of people would, would think in the community to, to make something like that complex to actually happen. Uh, but um, eventually we started back listening to what the community wanted to say, was saying for, um, to us. And then we started adding those uh, prioritizing. We started a group called the Next 10 Years Group to decide of the technical priorities of the project. And some of those are still uh, uh, where, where those things and some of we shift like every single body, every single one, the, the top most needed thing that everybody's telling to these days is, oh, you should get better TypeScript or more tight TypeScript integration. Now, this is a massive amount of debate in the community on how to do that and a lot of very interesting discussion happening all the time. But this is uh, essentially part of uh, of the process. But again, listen to your community. Your community more or less will ask for what they need. And from some of that group, there are probably also potential people that can help you do those implementations. Otherwise, it, it won't be, it won't happen. So yeah, that's, um, I hope I answered the, the, the question. I think so, priorities. We have uh, one minute. All right, Samir. Thank you, Robin. Um, great uh, topic. My name is Sumer Johal. I'm the executive director of AgStack, which is a, a project of the uh, Linux Foundation in Ag in agriculture. My question to you is, uh, how do you, what tools and processes have you used to found to be useful to engage the community to solicit the topics themselves, the questions that are worthy of a community, so that it's not just the loudest voice, one or two people who kind of 
are interested in coordinating, but they sort of drown out the quiet voices. Uh, as an example of that, in our community, we have a really interesting problem. The tech people don't really understand agriculture, and the agriculture people don't really understand tech. And so we really, when we ask the tech people what are the questions they want to answer, the results are completely different and irrelevant to the agriculture people. We ask them, and they ask, give questions about the, the topics that are totally, you know, go over the head of the tech people. So this may not be a direct translation to what you guys have been doing, but what, how have you found to be successful convening of questions? What are the questions to ask the community about so that not the loudest voice always wins? That's a good question. Um, trying to translate this to my use case or Enter enterprise demands on projects. So from reflect. from my so typically, what the, the way I, I have approached this and helped uh, in that in that decision making is uh, first thing you need to uh, this is brutal try to uh, gag the, the loud the loud voices mm -hmm. I, as this is as bad as bad as it sounds but you need to create a place where the quiet people can talk and from time to time it means pushing out somebody that is very loud very opinionated and uh, does not leave other space to express themselves or most, most of the time they don't even realize that they're doing it and you just need to tell them oh please let the other the other people speak okay or uh, or and so on. They are considered, especially in open source, there is, I, I, and this is a phenomenon that I've seen multiple times happen in the Node community, is uh, uh, people that engage in wall of text to prove their point. Okay? And it's, uh, somebody uh, knows what I'm talking about. So if you want to stall uh, an issue, you know, uh, progress in open source, you just keep writing long and long pages of text to uh, uh, to block it essentially, and you are filibustering. This is the term that you ask people users. You filibuster the issue up until the other person give up. So, you know this is what this is, uh, and at some point, if you are on the leadership of the project, you might need to intervene to essentially stop that, and your community needs to be able to stop that specific part. Now, if you can stop that and allow everybody to contribute. This is the first step to answer that, to, to go into that direction, okay? On how do you get the, the, to ask the question, you, uh, the, way you, uh, the way you are describing it, you have a community that is two-sided, and those communities that are two-sided are, uh, uh, are created around a few special individuals that are part of both worlds. And identify those special individuals, the people that are be able to, to keep one feet in one, in one world and, and in another, and they ca can help you create those bridges. And those are the people, and typically they're very quiet too, most of the time. So, but you need to get them to speak and they will give you the answer. And otherwise a project like, like yours, there are already, because the project otherwise will not exist without them, is just identify them and let them, what are the questions, like, you know, let them speak essentially. So I hope I, I, I give, yeah, I, I second that. It seems that your community is kind of like separated with in two groups that have different desires and pain points. Um, so one way could be that you cater your community engagement to these different groups indiv individually and filter out the responses and be then be able to connect the right people with each other based on the responses that you get. Like it's, I think it's hard to cater a single value stream of content to both when they have both different pain points and desires, right? So separate them and like look at them in, from an individual perspective and then connect the dots uh, based on the responses that you get from the community. Well, thanks everyone. I just want to close for folks who are watching this online. Uh, there's a number of ways to get involved in the community. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we have uh, a lot of us publish our calendars of our meetings um, on our websites. We have one at OpenJS, the Node Project, WebDriver, you have it as well. A lot of the calendars are on GitHub. Um, 
so yeah, find us. We also have a YouTube channels. We stream uh, most of our meetings live on YouTube. So if you want to see what it's like, you can go check them out and join us. Thanks. Thank you all. Uh -huh. Thank you all.